So let's have a look and see what comes with the heater. First of all, of course, you have the heater and you have a 13 amp uh, uh, cable coming off there with a 13 amp plug ready to go uh, straight into your socket. So basically, it's a plug and play, ready to go. You have your pipe fittings, which are for ABS, which is either inch and a half or uh, 50 mil. In actual fact, the pipe has got a step inside it, so whether it's inch and a half or 50 mil, it will still fit inside that uh, fitting. And that essentially screws on here, and your pipe work, your pipe work goes in here. So screw that up tight. Pipe work goes in there. You've also got fittings here for uh, flexible pipe, and this is geared for inch and a quarter and inch and a half. So if you have a look again, you can see it's stepped. So if it's inch and a quarter, it goes up to there. If you've got inch and a half pipe, it goes up to there. So it's ready to go. Uh, no need to cut it down or anything else. You can just put it straight on. So when we look at the heater itself, let's put them out of the way. When we look at the heater itself, there's a couple of things um, I will point out to you straight off. You have a thing here which is uh, the flow uh, switch. Uh, essentially, all decent swimming pool heaters will have a, sw a flow switch. So the water comes in this end and comes out this end. The switch detects the, the speed of the water. So if I actually take it out now, um, I can take the switch out. It's like a paddle. So if I take it out, you can see what, what's going on. There's the switch. Now if you look at that, if you can imagine the water's coming in, hits the paddle, and that makes sure the heater's on. If the flow of the water is not coming in fast enough, and uh, it hits the paddle and it's not fast enough, then it pulls back, turns the heater off. Occasionally people think that they've got a faulty heater. In actual fact, they've got a problem with the pump. The pump is not pumping the water through fast enough and this is often because say if it's a cartridge filter for example the cartridge has got clogged up and it's due for the clean let's have a look at the heater itself now so we have a simple simple controls on the heater we have uh, your temperature settings uh, it's, it's not complicated at all in actual fact we have this little uh, bit of kit here this uh, screws off here occasionally there may be a situation where your heater has um, uh, cut out for one reason or another uh, and this is a just this is a little reset switch so you can if you, you can pop that back in you just either push it down with your fingernail or maybe with a matchstick or something like that but that's a little uh, reset switch so a heater like this ideally suitable for 10 foot and 12 foot round above ground pools typically any bigger than that you're pushing your luck also it's highly recommendable that you buy yourself a solar cover a solar cover is like a bubble wrap cover that floats on top of the pool. Sunlight hits it, it adds to the heat of the pool, but it acts like a blanket when you've got a heater, so it helps retain the heat. So this heater is set for regular pools when you're using chlorine uh, and you're using standard chemicals. There is a titanium version and that is for people who've got uh, salt pools. So if you've got a salt chlorinator on your pool, you have to have the titanium version of the heater. Otherwise, you went with this with a salt pool, the elements will corrode very quickly.